wait, 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 wait. Which one is which? I am really confused right now, seriously. Okay, I know I might get a lot of hate for this, but I have to say it. Do we really need a $170 Smart EQ just for some surgical, but still basic EQing? Or can a free plugin actually compete with the best? By the end of this video, you might question yourself. Do I really need to buy an EQ? Hey guys, I am DJ Legion from Audio Waves Academy. If you are new here, this channel is all about helping you master music production and sound engineering. If you are into music production, you know how important EQ is, but Pro EQ plugins can be really expensive and not everyone can afford them. This is the real truth. So for that reason, today we are diving into an EQ battle, the Fafilet Pro Q4, which is like an industry standard, versus a free EQ plugin, the S the ZL Equalizer, if I am, if I remember the name correct. We will compare the sound, features, and whether you really need to spend money for pro level results. We will do together a blind test and at the end I will reveal which one is actually which. So stick around because you will get surprised. First up, let's break down what the ZL Equalizer brings to the table. For a free plugin, it's seriously impressive. It has 16 frequency bands, 8 filter types from low cut to low pass, 5 stereo modes. That means you can process the left and the right or the mid or the side or the stereo field separately. But that's not all, it also comes with auto gate compensation which keeps your volume balanced. It has also a solo mode which isolates specific frequencies for precision and the frequency display in note format which helps tuning correction. So that means for example I can go here double click and you can see that if I go on the right side you're going to see that we have here the G6. In addition it has also the side chain EQ which is great for controlling if you have some masking between a kick and the bass. For example, here right now, I have it on the dynamic. When I enable the dynamic and I choose here the audio, it's going to be the kick. And I activate it here with the S. You're going to see that every time that the kick comes, we have an attenuation in this point. In addition, we can go and change here however we want it. And what I really love about this one here is that I can go, for example, here in this one and I can go and choose the linear phase. And now I can go and use the linear phase mode if I want, for example, to use this one on mastering. And also what I really love about this plugin, for example, right now we have chosen that uh, sidechain is going to be the kick. And if I go and play, you're going to see two different ones that come on the ZL equalizer. One is going to be like a white color and the other one is going to be like a pink color. Now in this section here, where we are going to see this purple kind of uh, waveform, we are seeing the kick that is being played. And right now here, this I can go and right now it's in 200. Let's go and do it a little bit more. Right now we are seeing what happens on the channel when I apply the EQ. So we have a lot of information here for a free plugin. One thing that I really don't like about this plugin is the GUI. It's for me, it's really terrible. It doesn't make so much sense to go and work there because I don't like how it, se how it seems. Yeah, okay, I might be a little picky about this, but for some people it might be a deal breaker, but for a free plugin, I would just close my eyes. I'm just kidding. So to sum up, I think that this is a EL equalizer. It's a pretty good plugin for the free option. But now let's go and have a look on the FabField Pro Q4. This is the latest version of these plugins. It takes everything th from the Pro Q3 and it has a lot of big improvements. For example, if I go here, I think you know already the Spectral. So let's go and take this one down, for example. Let's go and bring it back and open it to dynamic. So now I can go and use the Spectral. I can go and talk about the Pro Q4 like for days because it is really awesome plugin. It has this ultra precise spectrum analyzer. You can visualize your mix with extreme accuracy. For example, if I have so many different here Pro Qs, you're going to see that we have such a big view that we can go and arrange and work like pretty quickly in comparison with the other plugin. Well, in general, the workflow is pro level. But from my experience, I can say one thing. There are a lot of features that most producers won't use daily. But enough with the talking. Now let's go and directly compare the two by applying identical EQ settings. We will do also a null test to see if there is a difference in sound. By the way, if you are enjoying this breakdown, make sure to hit the subscribe button. One of my biggest goals for 2025 
is to reach 15k subs. So I think it is really impossible to say the truth, but your support would mean the world to me. Plus, I have so much more to share with you this year, so you don't want to miss it. For example, I have right now the base, and if I go and duplicate this track and choose the gain and I invert the face, now we should not hear anything. But if I go and take out the face, we hear something. So that means this uh, ZLEQ analyzer, it cancels the other one from the other channel. So we have the same settings. Now let's go and do the same thing with the Pro-Q4. And again, we cancel each other out. Now that we know what the null phase is and we clear this thing, let's go and take out the second channel. And because I want to do this experiment with you, I will just go and bring back the base. And here we have, for example, the base on, with the Pro-Q4. And here I'm going to activate with the ZL equalizer. And now if I want to go and change the face again, and I will try also, this is an experiment. It's a little bit difficult to say the truth to come as close as possible, but we have almost like the identical EQ settings, okay? The curves, it's a bit, as I already mentioned, it's a bit difficult to make it work like it is. And right now, but I had only this 1000 Hertz, for example, here at minus five and a Q40. And here I got again at 1000 minus five and a Q25, which is the narrowest Q that we can find on the ZL equalizer. So let's go and deactivate this one. It's already out, just, just to be sure. Okay, everything is out. So right now we have only these two equalizers. If they sound identical, they should cancel each other out. So we can hear right away that they don't cancel each other out. So we are 100% sure right now that they don't do the same work. Let's start with a blind test. This is crucial because this way your ears will not be influenced by what you see. By listening first, you, your judgment will be based on purely on sound. So not on brand names or visual cues. I did a bounce with this the mix and the bounce was with one plugin. I exported one mix using the same EQ settings. Now let's go and take a deep breath, close your eyes and focus only on what you hear. I will close also my eyes and I will randomly click right now. I don't know how many times I have clicked and I will change every bar. So we'll start in three, two, one. Say the truth i am really confused i don't know which one was which <laughs> only from listening okay now that i open my eyes i know what is what i am really impressed right now there are some differences there for sure and if you if you listen carefully you will hear some things for example on the bus but let me go and play again and this time i will play the same video but i will just put because I didn't know what was there, I just randomly clicked. I will just put on the text below which one is which. So, did you hear any difference? Let me know in the comments below. My goal here was to tackle the same frequencies with the same gain reduction and the same Q to come as close as possible with the settings from the fab filter. I showed this also already earlier on the pro on the base. After a lot of testing, I found that the ZL equalizer it's a bit more aggressive, so I had to bring back the B reduction on the ZL EQ 
to match it, match it with the fab filters. So is fab filter pq4 worth price or is ZL equalizer good enough? If you're looking for a maximum control and to have absolute precision, ProQ4 is still the best choice. I always use the sidechain EQ and the graphic view, which is a new thing for masking frequencies. But if you want a high quality with a lot of features packed EQ, sacrifice these extra features that uh, special the EQ from the fab filter, as I mentioned earlier. But without spending a dime, ZL equalizer is absolutely worth using. Of course, it gives just one part of the puzzle. For example, you can go and use a lot of EQ on the low end. And if you want to manage your low end properly, it's just as important. And especially if you want your sub bass to cut through the mix. In my previous video, this one here, I break down exactly how to do that. See you there.